I want to talk to you now about the importance of microphones. Uh, I've tried very hard in this course to actually only discuss things that I do, uh, but uh, as my background is TV, radio and so on, uh, particularly in journalism, then uh, something I know a lot about is microphones and something that causes you a lot of uh, trouble. Let me give you some background first of all. And it's This first thing I'll tell you is that there's something that quite frankly surprises people and you don't realise. When you're watching television at home or when you're in the cinema watching a movie or when you're watching a course, training course like a Udemy course, you've got two things. You've got sound and you've got picture. Picture is usually a moving picture, some action in a movie or a film or somebody talking or whatever on a Udemy course. Most people assume that the most important part actually is the picture and that sound is considerably less important. And if you speak to anybody at all in television, movie making, so on and so forth, they will tell you that actually sound is far more important. There's actually a good reason for this. Imagine you sat in the latest cinema. You've got a huge screen there, you've got a comfy seat, you've got your popcorn and your pop or whatever, and you're watching a movie. You know that, that what you're actually watching is a flat screen. Your eyes pretend it's 3D, your eyes do pretend there's some depth, you pretend you're really there amongst the action. But actually, you know you're not, and but your brain compensates for that and accepts that, so accepts what isn't real life and sees it as realistic. However, if the sound isn't 100% perfect, then it destroys what's happening. Now, um, this is also the case in television. It's certainly the, the, the case in, in courses. The pictures are there as an adjunct, an add-on, if you like, to what's happening. The sound is of the most crucial. If you, It doesn't matter how bad the pictures are of a, a new scene uh, on TV, for example. You must need to understand what the journalist is saying. If you're on a Udemy course, by all means, don't make the pictures uh, poor quality. They need to be nice. They need to meet the Udemy requirements. But the sound is far, far, far more important. So... From my point of view, and what I would say to anybody uh, aspiring to be a Udemy teacher, the biggest expense, the biggest problem is actually microphones. What I would say to you is don't try and use the microphone on your um, laptop computer. Um, don't work in a noisy room. The, the room I'm actually recording at the moment, I've got the aircon on very high because it's, uh, it's about 37 degrees outside at the moment, particularly one of the two hottest days of this year. But you shouldn't be able to hear the aircon. I'll come back to why that is in a minute. If you're in any room with any sort of noise, um, we, we tend not to be aware of ambient sound. There can be a fan on, cars outside, traffic. We get used to those things, maybe a TV playing next door or whatever. We tend to ignore that. But a, a microphone that's on your laptop or your computer will not only pick up all the noise that's around you, but will also pick up noise from the computer itself. So laptops often have fans running and so on and so forth. I've got a, an Apple running on my desk at the moment. I'm just going to check. Actually, the fan isn't running on that. But it has quite a noisy fan, even though it's an SSD device, so there's no hard drive in it. When I overwork it, you can hear the fans going. And they tend to blow out straight on the microphone, and you get that uh, wind noise that's coming across. So um, there's, there's no good news, uh, other than you do need to buy a microphone. And you're probably going to have to lay out $30, $50 or more. And frankly, the more you spend, then the better it is. Uh, think about TV, radio, they have to have full quality. The microphones that I used to use in, in local radio years ago were, were £7,000, about $10,000 20, 30 years ago. Fortunately, they've come down enormously in price since then, and you can get uh, quite good microphones very, very cheaply. Now, I'm not going to get all technical about this, but there are various types of microphone, and what you're doing is you are purely picking up your voice. As you can see my, from my photograph above, I'm talking directly square on to the microphone. If I was to move to one side, my voice would disappear because I have what's generally known and simply known as a directional microphone. So although here today I'm in a room with the aircon blasting out, um, I'm listening on headphones, so I'm monitoring the sound. I can't actually hear the aircon, and I hope to goodness you can't either. But with the heat here today, I couldn't work any other way, quite frankly. But because the microphone is very directional, and the particular microphone I'll, I have, I'll tell you about in a second, is processing my voice as it comes in. It's purely aligned to record my voice. It's not picking up other sounds, and it's not picking up sound from behind. It's not picking up sound from the left and right. I'm just now clicking my fingers to the my left of the microphone, 
and I'm pretty certain because I'm monitoring everyone's you can't hear that it's very directional it's going straight into my uh, my voice is going straight into the microphone square on if you like and if I were to move to one side you wouldn't hear it now the particular microphone I'm using is uh, from what I can see of American price it's just launched it's about a hundred dollars and that's not bad but what's interesting is that I'm actually doing these recordings on an iPod uh, an iPod touch now, I love my iPod Touch because it's got cameras and uh, sound and editing and iPhone and iMovie and all sorts of things in, not iPhone, but all sorts of things in. But the uh, particular microphone I'm using has various connectors. It has a normal USB, so you can plug it into your computer or whatever. But it will also plug into an iPhone, uh, an iPod, and an iPad. And you've got, it comes a standard with the new connector, but you can buy an adapter for the older type of uh, iPod and iPad c- connector. Now, the reason I've chosen this microphone is that it's something like an advert, this isn't it? I promise you there's no affiliate fees or links or anything going, just telling you what I'm using. Is that not only is the microphone itself superb, I can see from looking uh, ahead of me now there's a little green light on the microphone. And when I go quiet like I did then, that goes blue, which tells me there's not enough volume. If I was talking too loudly, that would go green and tell me to speak a little softer or move further away from the microphone. But the program the the actual microphone comes with some apps which work on ipod iphone and ipod i missed all three out there i'm losing track i should have written those down and does a little bit of processing to the sound afterwards what i see in the udemy lounge all the time is people um, say well just record anything and then use programs like audacity which is a wonderful program to uh, clean the sound up I promise you, nobody in television, recording, uh, radio, anything like this at all, would ever dream of recording crap sound and fix it in what we call post-edit, you know, fix it afterwards after it's all been done. It's far easier, far better to fix it before you get it in the first place, in other words, to do it right in the first place. And um, cinema and so on, uh, journalism on the streets and whatever, we'd only ever correct the sound afterwards if somebody wired something up wrong or there was a lot of noise or something we couldn't correct at the time. But generally speaking, uh, sound isn't reprocessed that much without adding sound effects in movies and so on. But for uh, courses, for television, for radio, we try very hard to get the sound right in the first place. Now, the microphone I started using, and I've only started using this in the last few weeks, so you can judge for yourself from this what the sound is like, is an iRig, I-R-I-G, microphone HD. I'm going to say HD again, HD, because this is the new version of the iRig microphone. Uh, There is a previous version, which frankly isn't so good. It comes in black, but if you buy it from the Apple shop, which I did, then it's available in silver, and you can actually order it. I actually ordered mine online from Apple. So uh, that's what I've got. That's what you can see in the the photographs there. Um, I've also bought this framework that you can see, which uh, it sits on so it's level for my voice, and I can sit comfortably and talk into it. If I start touching or holding a microphone, you're going to get all those silly noises. Let's just see if we can get that to work. I'm actually tapping the microphone there. You can just hear it slightly. So it's in a sprung container. That's cost me about $30 on on eBay. The other thing that I have, and that you absolutely must have, is what's called a pop screen. When you do the letter P for Peter, um, if you just do the letter P with me now, everybody, come on, P. Right, your lips pop out. And what happens is you expel a lot of air as you do that. And that makes a popping sound on the microphone. Now, having what's called a pop screen, get rid of that, that's why it's called a pop screen, presumably, and basically it's a bit of very, very fine cloth. I can actually see through it, but only just. And that, um, when I use the letter P to pop, that removes that, uh, it breaks down, if you like, that air that's coming out. And again, pop screens are about $10. Now, I'm, I'm not into spending money on things if I can help it, but what I've spent there makes a difference between my courses being approved quickly, making them sound professionally, but the other thing is that I can just go in and do like this uh, particular recording and go into a, a 10 minute recording. I know that with a few seconds of post processing uh, in the iPod app with the iRig software that comes with it, I can uh, just make my voice sound a little bit better. I don't really sound like this. You see, can, actually, the bit of processing goes on. That adds about a minute at the end. I can then use that sound and attach it to the video or the slide or whatever I'm doing in my course. And I'm not spending hours playing about with levels and audacity and learning all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And I have to say, although my background, I started in radio when I was 13, which is more years ago than I care to remember, but coming up for, I think I've got to think about that, it's coming up 55, no, hang on, 45 years ago. <laughs> my wife just looked at me then, 45 years ago. And we used to do editing on um, tape and all that sort of thing. 
you know, I've never really been trained in all this stuff. There are specialist audio engineers at BBC and so on that can do these things. But generally speaking, you don't need to do that. It also, let's be honest about it, it takes the fun out of it. We enjoy talking into microphones. We enjoy teaching people. Having to mess about for hours afterwards, DSing and uh, removing pops and removing background noise is absolutely crazy. A huge waste of time. Frankly, it's soul-destroying. It's really awful. I hate it. And uh, it's completely unnecessary. However, um, you know, you do need a, a semi-decent microphone. So have a look around. Udemy gives some, some great ideas as well. The iRig Mic HD isn't on their list as yet because it's very new, as I say. It's only been out a, a few days. I got one of the first in Europe, fortunately. And I wanted to try it very much because I do like the iRig equipment. And it's very, very good. But remember, uh, if you get it right first time, uh, and I hate doing retakes of audio and so on. If you get it right first time, you can actually move on to your next lecture, your next thing. You're not worrying about loading into all these uh, programs and messing about trying to get the sound and adjusting envelopes and sine waves and I don't know what else. It's just too complicated. Uh, if you're an experienced sound engineer, then yes, you can do that. But frankly, if you're an experienced sound engineer, you know to have a decent microphone and recording in the first place, and then you don't need it unless there's some major mistakes to cut something out. I'll occasionally stumble in one of these talks in a few seconds. I can use Audacity or so on uh, to cut a few seconds out actually now using this the iRig um, uh, software to do that as well. All the software I mentioned, incidentally, is free with the iRig, so uh, there's no extra to pay. You can plug it straight into any USB socket, but then you'd have to use Audacity or whatever to do it. Uh, but again, that, that's a great free program, and you can use that as well. So once more, I'm using the iRig, I-R-I-G, Microphone HD, from the company called iRig, which is fair enough. And if you just search um, Google or whatever, iRig Mic HD, then you'll find that. And uh, so far, I'm very pleased with it. I appreciate $100 or so is, is, is a lot of money. Um, but uh, you'll probably save that in one course just in the sheer, you know, just time your, uh, cost your timings at a few hours. It's going to cost you sometimes longer in time to, to clear sound up than it is to get it right in the first place. And I think you'll agree, uh, it sounds very good. Always when you're recording instantly, always monitor the sound. Don't just sit in the room, put the headphones on, just record a few seconds at the beginning of complete silence. And then you can tell through the headphones if uh, there's any other noises in the room. You can sometimes get you know, traffic or kids playing or noise around. Um, I had a problem the other day, so I'm terribly boastful, but above my studio is my swimming pool up on the roof. So I'm on the second floor in the swimming pool above me. And the pool guy came in. I didn't realise he was here, and I could just hear loads of noise. And I couldn't work out with water, the headphones off, and I realised it was the, the pool guy cleaning the pool. You know, the pool goes round and empties the water and back around. I don't know really what it does, but it was a lot of noise. And um, frankly, if I hadn't put the headphones on, I'd not been thinking about it. I'd not listened for a few seconds. I might not have recorded that and might have recorded that and not it till later. So record a few seconds of empty sound at the beginning, just so that A, you've got, you can edit a bit out if you want to do. Don't start as soon as you press record. That's a bad mistake of me. I make even after all these years occasionally. And always at the end of recording, uh, just pause for seven seconds and uh, seven seconds at the beginning is a good time, and uh, seven seconds of silence at the end, and that will really help you, give you time just to cut the end off or fade out or whatever. So all those sort of things are very important. A good microphone is important. I'm sorry it costs a bit of money, but if you think about um, creating a Udemy course and the sort of money that can be made, the number of people you can reach, go back a few years, the equipment would cost a lot more, Computers, most of them have got perfectly uh, acceptable computers these days. Ignore people who say you need to spend thousands on microphones. Uh, this one's already travelled a fair bit around with me. I'm doing outside broadcasts and things for television on it. I'm very, very happy with it. And certainly for indoors in the studio here at home, it's, uh, it's superb. So that's microphones. I hope that's helped. I know I've gone on a bit there, but uh, it, it's such a crucial part and so important to people understanding how uh, I get to understand, despite my English accent and whatever. It does make my voice sound good, it is easy to use, and once I've got it, it's going to last me a long time as well.